You see, here is the sea, Mr. Sanders, so calm and apparently unchanging. And yet, uh, it is part of my new conception about the nature of the world at this same sea. Many times in the past, history of our Earth has rolled over the surfaces of the land masses, sweeping away all life and vegetation and eventually turning again to its former bed. This is the uh, part of the biblical theory of the flood and uh, the theory of people of other races. Oh yes, this uh, actual event, the last one, is recorded in all the sacred scriptures of all the old civilizations, from the Hindus to the Bible. Uh, Mr. Foster, let's, before we go on with that, you've made a number of predictions, scientific predictions, which you claim have come true. Now, what are those predictions and how do you make this claim? Well, they are all based on the new notion that the physical invariance principles of contemporary science are invalid. And I stated this first in a manuscript reviewed in Australia in 1954. And uh, the val validity of this statement was confirmed finally last year at Princeton when the principle of time reversal invariance was found to be invalid. Well, uh, who accepts the fact that you've made these predictions? Accurately. Well, the facts as such are undeniable and must be accepted because they're documented and it was accepted as such at Oxford, at the Tasmanian University and also at uh, the National University. The facts as such are accepted but the explanations and the new views as yet are not. Do you mean to say that you reject all the basic principles of science established since Aristotle's day? No, it does not mean that. I state and maintain that uh, those concepts and interpretations of science which are still based today on Aristotelian logic have a certain purpose but th that is defined by uh, a statement as that a spade is a spade or a fine chisel is a fine chisel but these concepts are inadequate for a complete understanding of the real nature of the world. How is it possible Mr. Foster that you as an individual can work out these theories when all the other established scientists have computers and all the money of governments behind them, and yet they apparently can't. Well, I do not claim at all that this is due to my own intellect or to my own penetration. Uh, I have been deeply inter interested from early youth in the real nature of the world, and I held my own views and ideas. But uh, many years ago, about 14 years ago, when I was challenging one of the fundamental conventional principles of science, I had a definite inspiration, not knowledge as such, but uh, an indication and a guidance which I followed on which I worked very hard and to evolve into a new structure of understanding. Inspirations are related to thoughts of genius. Do you think or consider yourself to be a genius? No. I um, consider myself to be an ordinary, humble person who wants to serve mankind with what we, man has striven for from the beginning of consciousness with truth and understanding of the world. Well, now, one thing, you have a theory about the moon, and uh, we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon. Um, what is your theory? Well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock, but it is a plasma, a plasma phenomenon, a cosmic plasma. Uh, and that this fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958, and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. What will be the result if you are proved to be correct in your theories? The result will be uh, profound and decisive because it will give proof that a complete re reinvestigation of the laws of nature is necessary. Because if the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it, the soft landing attempts will all fail. That means that the mass of the moon is less, far less, than is currently assumed. It's in a different state of energy and it has far less mass. That means there is no more explanation for the tides. If the moon, for example, had only a thousandth part of its current mass, then the tides would only be two inches high and the conventional theories instead of sometimes 14 feet. And that means that if it is proved that the moon is a plasma, then all gravitational theories are out and the new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be evolved. Aren't you being a bit adventurous though because uh, you know we're going to be able to test out your theories on the moon fairly soon? Well not anymore. Eleven years ago uh, of course uh, it was rather taking a risk. I was considered a lunatic of course but by now the evidence, accumulated evidence, is already so much in my favour 
But I'm not taking any risks anymore. On the contrary, uh, there is scientific views expressed all over the world now that uh, the moon uh, seems to be of a quite different nature of what was assumed. But and the, the Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Oh, well, that will never happen. Not on the moon. On Mars, on Venus, on other planets, yes. But the moon is definitely, as I assert, a plasma. Isn't there a slight contradiction? You mentioned the, the moon and the tides, Mr. Foster. And at the earlier part of the interview, you talked about the tides sweeping over the Earth. Well, there is no contradiction there because once the moon is proven not to be a piece of rock, but something of far less mass, and the gravitational theories are out and discarded, new concepts have to be involved which will show that the lawfulness of nature in the cosmos is identical to that in a hydrogen atom or in, uh, in, in atomic processes. And when this is understood and worked out in full, it will be found that the physical processes of the Earth are quite different in geophysics of what it is present assumed, and that lawfully in certain periods, mostly during the ice ages, which occur every 200 million years, and there is a reason for that, the axis of the Earth suddenly tilts over. And when this happens, then you get the floods of the Bible, which were recorded before. The tides, the ordinary, everyday tides, tides have an explanation, even if the moon had almost no mass at all, because they are field effects. They are induced by cosmic pressures which exist in the field of our solar system. What's the benefit to mankind in your theories? Well, one, the first one, and the most important, I would briefly put down, is this. I think it is a new conception about the nature of the cosmic world and about the nature and the veracity of consciousness, conscience, of morality. At present, we have a glaring contradiction in the assertions of fundamental science. Scientists assert that they are completely uninhibited in their pursuit of truth, that they're completely uninhibited in their pronouncements and that they produce for mankind out of their knowledge or understanding means which man can use according to his moral nature. So if the scientist produces a television set or a jet car, jet motor car or a hydrogen bomb, it is up to the common man then to use it in a manner which uh, he finds uh, according to his human nature. Yet, the very same processes of dialectics of science also declare that morality, the concept of man's moral nature, is an illusion, that it is merely behaviorism or something due to conditioned reflexes or to herd instinct. And this, of course, is a contradiction which must be resolved and must, must go out. And it will be found as a consequence what I had the privilege to see and to experience in my mind, that there is a moral law in the universe on which we, in which we partake and which is binding on us and which is decisive on our future. Now, in the practical aspects, when it is understood that the geophysical laws are quite different and that this uh, tipping over of the Earth axis has occurred often, suddenly in the past, and will occur again, if the new view is elaborated, and I will not live long enough anymore to do that, it will be understood that the speed of light is not a universal constant as it is now the foundation of science, that it's changeable and that perhaps 50 years before the next change of axis, there will be an increase in the speed of light. And if scientists will work out why and how, then there will be sufficient warning that mankind can prepare itself. Instead of building atom bomb shelters and hydrogen bombs by the millions, we will build provisions of uh, making humanity floatable and to survive uh, this crisis. So it comes again to the age-old concept that truth is the guidance, the hope, and the directive of the human mind and that man must strive to understand and to know the real nature of the world.